with the ball. There were two things today that did not have the level of Champions League, which was the pitch and the referee. It's a straight mark six for the referee today. It was Thomas Tuchel after the Man City, uh, after the Bayern Man City match um, past past week. What do you think of that? <laughs> I read the I read the quote I heard and read the quote. And uh, what do you think of it? I think there was a lot of emotion into it. There's a lot of emotion because it's Champions League and they had to come back from a three 0 down. But it's not it's not wrong. It's not wrong about the referee wasn't the best. It hasn't been the best. I think the decision making wasn't good enough for this type of game. This level I mean, in general it has to be better. But for this type of game, yeah, I can understand the, I understand the frustration. For the pitch, I wasn't on the pitch, so I couldn't really see. Yeah, it's yeah. only when you're on the pitch that you can really testify about the quality yeah. of the pitch. But the referee, yeah. you know. See, the, the pitch is the pitch, but the, the moment the game started and they showed the referee, um, I said, uh, I watched it with my wife, she wanted to see it. I said, oh, my God, the referee. Uh, we had some past experience with, with Frankfurt. The That's French right. guy. Yeah, French guy. Uh, yeah. Not because he's French. I mean, let's say. I mean, the French guy because I notice French referees when they're on the pitch because I know them. I mean, I know them. I know who they are. So I was like, ah, yeah, it's going to be oh, a game. Riff. He was a disaster. I mean, he 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 sprinted to to Dick Obamecano the red card before even checking with the with the assistant whether or not it was offside. Like he's he, I, I felt from from minute one he wanted to get involved in the game way too much you know he he was looking for can i can i have a you know decisive moment here giving a red card giving a penalty giving this giving this what are you doing like it's it's non-stop it's not about you mate you know it's just stay in the background try to guide the game it's it's one of the best quarterfinals in a long long time just stay calm you know? i don't know i did not get to get I, I, I don't know if you wanted to get that much involved but for sure He's been very emotional because he's been erratic. He he didn't take, he wasn't thinking enough, especially when you got assistance and he made himself look like a fool when you sprint to get send someone <laughs> somebody off and all of you send him off. And that's funny because I could have read the the chat between them two in French yeah. because yeah. They, they're both French. Yeah, and that was so awkward, and he must have felt so bad when. He heard in his ears, it's, no, 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 no. It was, it was offside. No, yeah, watch my flag. It's up since two minutes ago. It's still offside. <laughs> it, it, I don't know. So, we, yeah, I don't know if he wanted to play a bigger part in this game that he was supposed to, but definitely he was way too emotional and he just messed up the his whole game. He messed up the game and his whole game and now he's going to deal with consequences, I reckon. Unfortunately. So let me introduce you first, uh, Sebastian. Thank you for, for being on Hamkes and Kalak. We figured out before before the, the episode quickly what it what it means. <laughs> um, Sebastian Bosson, thank you for being here. Um, obviously former um, football professional, played for I, I didn't know you started in Metz, then you played for Newcastle, uh, Tottenham, Wolverhampton, Norwich, Watford. 300 appearances overall, seven goals only, if I, if I can trust the online sources. What's wrong there, Sebastian? Seven goals? Seven goals? I'm a defender and <laughs> I'm a defender, but I used to be a striker when I was young. Okay. But you know what? I think, I really think I lost, I lost it <laughs> going, being, I had so many chances in my career, so many, and I, I think I wasted most of them and I only scored seven. seven. Uh, but only, I've, no, I sure. saved more. I saved more goals than I scored. Let's put okay, it this way. Here we go. Here we go. Stay on the positive, Marco. Yeah, uh, not, not <laughs> to forget also 15 apps for the Cameroon uh, national team. And including um, appearance at the World Cup, uh, which this is also how we met um, during the World Cup here in, here in Qatar. Uh, you came over to support by what, what you're now a, a coach, uh, coaching on, on mindset, on attitude, on, on authenticity, like we spoke last week. And you supported our venture here um, with with overseas, and and brought the 
the people into the right mindset. And that was amazing. Uh, it was a pleasure to meet you back then. And we just said, this is more than five months ago. Um, so I'm walked up this, this history um, by now, a good time history. How was it for you? I, I think it was the first time for you in Qatar, if I remember right. Um, how was it for you being there? Just about the World Cup itself, it was very, it was a, an amazing experience because that's the first time that I spent a World Cup on the other side. Mm-hmm. I, I've always been on the player side, but now being on the other side was a bit, it was a good learning experience. It was very different. His very, his passion was good, was still there. When, uh, yeah, on a different level, and the World Cup itself in Qatar yeah. was amazing. I mean, from start to finish, and I, because I've been there, I've been in Qatar three, two, three weeks before the start of the World Cup and until the last day, I've seen it all. And I've, I've, I had came before just to get ready. It was just, for me, well done. Congratulations. The atmosphere, the game, the level of games. I've, I've watched so many games and I could have, I would have never imagined to be able to watch that many games in a World Cup because yeah. people were talking about Qatar. There was a lot of controversy, a lot of talk. But for me, being on the ground, and I kept saying, and I keep saying that to people, that's the best World Cup ever. That for me, that's my, that's my opinion. And yeah, it was, I mean, I don't know. It was something that I will never forget for many reasons, different reasons. And I love, I love the Middle East. I love Qatar. I had been there before, but now I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I had been there before, but now at that time for the World Cup, ah, it was just an upgrade. (laughs) It was just an upgrade. Qatar is always good, but now there was, there was a different flavor and well done to the Qataris. And then we said uh, it was special because we could attend multiple matches at the same day, right? Um, I think the stadiums walk far to as far as maximum, maybe at the time, an hour from each other. And these are the, the stadiums that are the, the, the biggest travel uh, travel distance in between. Uh, how many games was your was your maximum in a day? I've done, there was four games a day, right? In total. Yeah. I've, I've done three. You've done three. I've, I've done three <laughs> and I couldn't even imagine. <laughs> I was saying to my, to my friends, listen, I'm going to the first game. I'm go- and we're going to, you, go- you still at the game? I said, yeah, I got a ticket. I got there. And then I was working a little bit for also for TV and uh, radio in U- English radio. So yeah. I was moving, but that was so intense. At the end of the day, I was exhausted. I'm, between the work with overseas, the work, and you keep moving. Oh my God, that 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 was crazy. Yeah, but three games a day maximum. That was good. Do, do you remember which, which game it was? Wow, Marco, I don't have your memory. Uh, no, no, oh, no, no, no. You, you don't want to have my memory. What was what was your favorite? <laughs> what was your favorite game then? Hey, I'm sorry, but you're gonna be the final. <laughs> Must be right. Be the, it has to be the final. The final was just for a football perspective, from a football fan, because I was a bit of a fan. That was yeah. just mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. The atmosphere, the, the passion, the tension. Oh, no, that was a, the best cocktail ever. But also the game overall, right? The game was, it was a brilliant game. That's what that's what I said about the football. The the level of football was really high level, and at the World Cup, sometimes when you play interna- international football, the the pace of the game sometimes is not as quick as when you play domestic football. It's a different mm-hmm. football when you play international football ra- than when you play in your club, for example. But at that World Cup, it started slow as you could have imagined because of many reasons, because of the time of the World Cup, you know, the injury, I mean, the timing, obviously the planning. Timing, 
time you, you mean during during the season, being a, a Winter World Cup? Yeah, because it was a winter a Winter World Cup. That, that changed that changed a lot of things, even within the, uh, the the players' body, the players' mind, the way they approach the, the previous weeks before the World Cup. So, and they didn't have much time to get prepared. Some of them just turned up a couple of days before, a, a, like a small, really short camp. Then off you go. So he was going to start slow. Obviously, look at Argentina lost against Saudi Arabia. No, oh, yeah. yeah, no disrespect to Saudi, but they weren't ready. Argentina they played, but but they still they ended up winning the World Cup. So they needed time, but the, at, towards the end, the intensity was. Up there, so yes, it was very a very very good World Cup. If you if you recall your your memories, and you said mindset wise was completely different for the players. You end of the season, do you? Um, you have a, a winter tournament. You arrive, yeah, you know, like you said, a couple of days prior to to the event itself, um, and then you you need the the group stage basically to get ready um, if you if you want to achieve anything. Do you remember how was it? How was it for you when you played in the World Cup for Cameroon? Um, maybe we can we can quickly talk about this. How was your experience? It must be great as a player. It, it is great. It is something that you're never going to forget. And especially the World Cup I played in South Africa because Cameroon is the indentable lion when the World Cup was in Africa itself. So when the atmosphere was very much like home, so even though South Africa is really far from Cameroon, yeah. but the way the, the African atmosphere that was there, I, I will never forget the day we landed, we landed in Bloemfontein. The, the welcoming was just, know, honestly, out of this world. And the whole setup, you know, when you do play for uh, your country, the national anthem, when you see the badges, the Walker badges in you, this is there's that produces a different feeling within yourself. You are you are feeling within a different sense of responsibility because it's a it's a higher level, it's another level, and this is just something you want to picture, you want to snapshot all those moments and keep them in your brain, not even on your phone. You want to keep them here, and that's yeah. what I did. So that's what when people ask me how was it. Sometimes it's hard to explain because you got to go through it. This is exactly the same when I said to, uh, for the World Cup in Qatar for different reasons. I said to people, you should have been there. I can tell you how it was, but until you don't leave it, it's difficult to explain. But yeah, the World Cup as a nation is the highest, highest level that you can play. And I think what you what you mentioned is the case, especially for Qatar. Um, if you haven't been here during the World Cup, with you know, especially Western media and, and what's been been going on and what's been said about Qatar and how the World Cup will be and whether or not you know the, the people living here would be welcoming or not uh, welcoming everyone or not everyone. I think the the difference and the, the contrast um, between the talks outside and what you have could have experienced here, I can imagine has never been greater because um, at, at the time, uh, German TV approach, approached me and said, can we talk, we live here for, for six years almost, can we talk about uh, how it is? And I really sense they, they're trying to get something out of this, you know, like, yeah, it's really not that good, it's not, you know, we don't enjoy living here. And if you're a resident here, even if you're not Qatari national, but if you're a resident here, you, you you feel like you need to defend that place. You, it's your home, you know. And uh, there's such a, a massive injustice in Western media going on at that time. Said, and why would you imagine I live here for five six years? Because it's terrible, you know. It's the question like you're asking is, and, and and what you're aiming for, I won't tell you because it's. I mean, this is a celebration of football, um, and everyone is welcome. And of course, you know the. The nation is uh, one point something, uh, it's two point something million, uh, 2.8 million people living here. And you welcome over a million 
people during a four weeks window. Of course, it's challenging. Of course, it's it's new. Of course, it's never been done before. Of course, there will be shortcomings, but yeah, I, I was very much enjoyable. Yes, and I can testify. And I was skeptical in terms of organization, in terms of logistic. As you said, you, Qatar has welcomed more, almost half of his own population yeah. for four weeks. Yeah. And I was, and once again, until you've done it, you don't even, don't really know what it looks like. And what shocked me, oh, in a nice way, was they never been, I don't know, overwhelmed. There was some challenging situation to deal with, but I've never heard somebody of sin because I was out there a lot and I moved. I took the metro. I took every, I was doing everything. And I've never seen anybody really complaining about direction or not being able to sort out a situation or a problematic situation. There was always a solution. And that's what yeah. I love because even though sometimes even the road were closed and there was a, a lot of tra heavy traffic well, compared, that, compared yeah. than usual because the whole Corniche was closed. Yeah, true. It was closed. But even with that, I think people were feeling so great, so joyful, so much joy that it was coming second. We were going to find a solution. Even when I was waiting for my taxi for longer than usual, Ah, it's all right. You know what? It's it's all right. So that 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 shows that he was a, a success. Just because of those things, not not the the biggest one that people expected. That's why you gotta be there. You had to be there to see. All right, no, 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 no. Regardless what you think about Qatari people, they've been humble enough, and they have. I wouldn't say the right, but situation, they live in a certain comfortable situation sometimes to say, you know what, we do it our way. But what I really loved about the whole mindset, Qatari mindset was, you know what, we never done it before. Let's humble ourselves and let's learn and let's correct. And they were correcting as they were going. That's why it was a success. And that, that, takes, that shows a lot of humility. And they just wanted to celebrate, and they, they gave us the best celebration. Yeah, and and you say uh, mindset, which which is a beautiful bridge to the to the next topic we we want to talk about, and the openness of you can have a plan, but you still need to be open to to change as things happen, right? And the World Cup might have been a great example for that. You can, you should, you need to have a plan, but you need to be open to take action when the plan doesn't doesn't go your way um and there's there's one one saying that um a midwife that we my wife and i are working uh, together with over the last couple of weeks and there's so many situations in life where what she says applies and she always says if you don't know your options you don't have any and it, that's right like she advocates us about the whole, you know, about the whole journey that we are uh, about to go on. Um, and she always says, as you need to be educated, this is something, if you don't know your options, you don't have it, then people will make the calls for you. And speaking of mindset and being ready and having a plan and then being open to change as well, I think this was exactly the case during the World Cup. So you, you are now post, post professional football. Uh, career, uh, a coach for for the mindset, and not only for players but also for for business people. Um, that transition, how does what what similarities, what parallels do you see between maybe mindset as a player, but then also like an, an organizing committee for a World Cup and the things that you coach? From, as as weird as for some people, it's weird when I make the parallel when I look at my life and football, I've always been into sports. Sports is very unpredictable. It's unpredictable. You can prepare as much as you want. It depends on too many factors, especially when it's not an individual sport. So there's a lot of things that you don't have control over that you're going to have to deal with. 
Yeah. And that's that's for me the parallel. In football, I've been football is a very emotional sport, like a lot of sports. There's a lot of emotion. In the World Cup, there was a lot of emotion because there's expectation. There's expectation that people got challenged. You got challenges. When I was playing football, I wanted to have objective targets that I wanted to reach. I wanted to get to the to the first team. I wanted to have my first contract. I don't whatever challenge you have. And for me, in life, we all have different challenges. There's different type of players. We're gonna that are gonna reach different levels, but people keep grinding, keep looking for more, whatever it is. So for me, it was just, and I always been always been somebody who wanted to win so much that I was asking myself question, how can I get there? Or what is it that I don't do that I need to do just to change the situation? That's been in me from day one. I've always been curious. So that's why when I coach, I ask a lot of questions. And I'm, it's natural for me to ask questions to be not nosy in a, in, a, in a nasty way, but I'm curious. I like to poke and I've quickly realized that people don't really know themselves. When I was, I was all over my emotion. My emotions were all over me and I couldn't really handle them. And I was always wondering, say, what is it that about this situation that makes you go crazy? That makes you look, lose your mind. And when I, I looked at business, I looked at football, I looked at individuals, even within my own household, my family, we're all different, but if I had one thing that I was sure about is everybody wanted to do the best, to be, to be better, but people just didn't know how to do it. And I've learned what I call the freakiest success. That for me, that's why I teach when I speak, when I do my keynote speech, speak, it's like, you gotta, we gotta want it. That's what I've learned. You gotta want it. You gotta know how to do it and you gotta be able to pay the price. And those free keys applies all over the world. So whether you're a plumber, whether you're a football player, or you're a CEO, you have objective. But most of the people, they just don't know how to do it. That's when I come to place. Because I've learned for myself, I'm my first client. And as the brain is the, the strongest muscle, and for me, we, we're made of broken pattern. And if we know, if we have the ability and the humility to just relax and listen, I just don't know. Let me look for it. And you were talking about the option, the plan. Yeah. For me, the plan is one thing, but you can't have an objective and a target and everything goes to plan. It rarely happens. No, it, you rarely have to, <laughs> it rarely does. But, and I, I love military analogy. when. When, and I used to say, and I keep saying that to a lot of people, when, I don't know, a group of military guys, they go on a mission, they have maybe four helicopters, 10, 10 soldiers in each, and they've been preparing. They've been preparing for this mission. They have to risk for month and month and month when they off they go. And one of the helicopters has been blown up. Boom. What are they going to do? They didn't expect that. They couldn't expect that. They, you don't plan for that, obviously not. You have no plan for that. So what are you going to do? Are you going to abort the mission? Or are you going to keep? You're going to just change your plan. You're going to adapt and change your plan. You're going to be flexible enough to know, to get ready for the worst and keep moving because you want it so much. So for me, what I teach people is, it's not about the plan. It's about the mission. You don't abort the mission. We go in there regardless. We're going to find another way. But you, for that, you got to be open-minded. And back to the Qataris, they've been open-minded. That's what I, I looked at the World Cup from a different perspective. And I, I, I love behaviors. I work in behaviors, emotion. And when I, especially when you have a strong background and a very traditional one, sometimes you kind of, you can be seen as rigid. But there's a difference between, for me, the category, they've been really mature. They're mature. There's, you can have the same similarity, the same characteristic, 
But because you're not aware, you're not humble enough, it showed up, it showed up in a very immature way. So you kind of build something with one hand and you tear it down with the other hand because you don't even know what you got. Then they did know and they showed the world that, listen, that's how you, so the, that's how you see us. But the mindset, to, that, show, that gives people a lesson in terms of, okay, we know we don't know everything. We're good at a lot of things. We have resources, but still that doesn't do everything. Let us learn, tap into our resources, and they came out on the high. And that's what I, I, I teach and I, for me, I coach people on. Life is a journey. You've got you to feed your brain with the right food. Everybody knows that if you eat junk food, you're going to put on weight. So. Because you want to be healthy. That's exactly the same for the brain. You gotta feed your brain with the healthy food. And for that, you gotta be open to, to learn, to grow. And that's what I love about mindset, football. And football don't lie. If you're not good in your brain, in your head, your body's not gonna follow. Or it's gonna at some point it's gonna hit a certain level and you're not gonna grow. But for that, you gotta be you got to be aware. It's all about awareness. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering if are, are people receptive to to ideas? Because I think you know the and you you mentioned it, the the physical workout it's it's obvious it's visible, right? Um, you you eat well, you work out, you go to the gym, you take care of yourself, and sooner or later you hopefully see results one way or another, right? That's that's visible. It's not always visible working on the mindset. So I'm, I'm worried, I'm, I'm wondering, I'm, I'm fully aware how, how important it is because it, it puts you in a different, in a different position in, in life, decisions you take, um, relationships that you have, etc. But how, how receptive do you see people and the people you're talking to? Um, and has it changed maybe over the last couple of years? Because I have a feeling that Things like COVID, you know, more a topic of the past, luckily, but have brought awareness to topics like that. Did you see that in the, the past couple of years as well? Yeah. It's, I can compare it from the early days that I played football. When I, do, okay. I did start playing football, we couldn't even speak about mental health issue. It wasn't a thing. It was yeah. when you were speaking about that, you were seen as a weak guy, as a weak person in general, because it wasn't just out there. So you're right. People are not receptive as much as I wish they, they, they should be, or I think they should be, because it's a process. It's out but there but more. So, but if I can cut in, sorry, but it, it's still, especially for football teams, it's such an obvious thing to see, that especially if you maybe if you, have a, a mismatch in a, in a cup in a cup tie. There's a clearly obvious better team, uh, skill wise, player, players versus a, a weaker team, as you see. And the weaker team still can outperform, outperform them. And that's that's mindset, that's confidence, that's conviction. It's in that way, isn't it obvious? And hasn't it been obvious for a long, long time like that? It's been obvious for me, it's been obvious when you want to look at it, but. People are not, re are re they're not happy and they're reluctant to change. Everything mm -hmm. which is new, whether you, it makes sense for you because you've passed this already, but people are comfortable to stay into what they know. The, the real courage for me, and that's why, that's why people said, oh, Seb, you, you, you are, you're too straight. I said, listen, if I, I'm not, I can't be part of your comfort, confortation club. Confirmation club. I can't comfort you. I got to yeah. tell you things as I see them for your own good. So people, then they, they don't want to change. They want to stay within what's comfortable for them because at least they don't take no risk. And that would, because if they take risk, if they try change, they, they're scared of change because that would maybe enlighten some of their weaknesses or limitations, which is for me normal. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. So that people are not receptive because when you talk about the physical work is visible, people are 
seeking outside validation, approbation, you know, validation. So at least they can show they care about what people think way too much. That's why they want to do the work, but they don't. They don't want to do the internal the internal one because nobody can see. You can't show. You can't even showcase on Instagram or social media. Look at me. It looks good. Uh, my brain is good, but it's funny because your brain controls everything else. Yeah. But people are not willing to and you, you, you invest in themselves. That. But they invest. But they can invest and into something that is, is going to be seen. And that's where the disconnect, yeah. that's where I'm going to point the disconnect. But it goes back to the way you're naturally wired. And you got to be aware. For me, it all starts with awareness, as we spoke last week. It's, it's a being aware. There's no good or bad combination of behavior. It's just a matter of, okay, do I really know how I move? And when you do know why you're so scared of changing, then you can have more control over you can have more impact most of the people they don't even know they have blind spot yeah of course if you know, they don't know if you don't if you don't know your options you don't have any right if you don't know your option you don't you don't have any yeah, there's a lot of things that you don't know that you don't know that's why i call the blind spot and my role is to bring them in front of you for you to have a look at it people think oh i'm going to change you're not good i don't think you're going to be able to change you're going to improve you're going to improve. You're going to be ha having more control over your own situation. And ultimately, ultimately, you're going to, what I say, you're going to start living and stop surviving because people are in surviving mode. Oh, no, it's, I, I, they hang on so much to what they know. But when you hang on to in a comfortable situation, there's no growth. But people see growth. They keep do, saying do you, it. Do, do you feel bringing this back to players? Um... Do you, would you agree that, let's see, if I, if I think about it and how you speak about it, you know, physique, one might plateau at one point. You know, there's just so much talent you can have, so hard, uh, the body can strike only so hard, you can run only so fast. You know, you will, you will be fast, you will be even Mbappé, but you know, there's a limit to it. Um, you can jump only so high. You, but isn't there so much room for improvement on, on the mental side, you know, how, I, I don't know, it feels like we've, we've tapped into about 90% of what physically is possible, right? And we've tapped into 20% of what's mentally possible in football as well, you know, on how strong you can and how confident you can appear as an individual and then eventually as a team. Um, do you see that? So you, right? yeah. Because I know you, you speak oh. to players, you, you coach them. Do you see that? Yes, I do. And it's all, as I said again, it all starts with awareness. When you are open enough to feedback, when you are the problem with football player problem, and it can be explained, is we think we know it all. Yeah. You you've been you've been exposed to fame, to a lot of things from a young age. So at some point in your life. You think you know it all. And that's where the problem starts. Because you're not even in con you're not unconsciously, you're unconsciously not open, you're closed. Because you you've been your ideas have been reinforced by the wrong people. So mentally, as you said, we only used as human being, we only used less than 20% of the our brain capacity. As, so there's a lot of room for improvement. Are we going to be able to use even 18? I don't think so. But from 20, so I mean, we can constantly improve if you want to. Yeah. If you are open to say, you know what? There's a lot of things that I don't know. For me, I always love to keep things very life basis. It's about life. Everything we see, I don't want to use big theory because sometimes people can't relate. Whatever going through your daily basic, your daily life, that's we can attach principle to it. It doesn't have to be from Harvard or you know all these psychological schools. That's what that that's what worked for me. Because if you talk to me in a very fancy way, I'm not gonna connect. But if you make it life related. 
Yeah, I get it. Yeah, so, if you speak the same if you speak the same language, right? See, that's what we're talking about. Building a language because most of the time, and it was the case for myself, I was feeling a lot of things, feeling or thinking about, but I couldn't put words on it. Yeah. I couldn't put and, words on it. When you can create a language, when you can when I can actually put words on what you feel or what's going through your mind, oh, all of a sudden it's, it's clearer. It's, it's like it's a relief. Clarity, yeah. clarity. Oh, clarity. You get understood by people. Okay, I'm not alone. And in football, especially in football, that's the hardest bit to say, listen, you know what? Okay, when you tell me, you let me know, once you all the... I am, I am all this, you know, this, this shell, this carapace, this. Okay. Once you're done with that, once you realize that I've done it before you, everything you have, I, I, I've went through it. Okay. Once you calm down, let me know. Now we can start working. And it goes back to how much do you want it? And that's how I catch them. And even any overachiever in their life, regardless of your character, you can be very shy it doesn't matter if you want it really bad that's why i said the freaky success you got to want it if you really want it but you just don't know how to do it you you we would get to it we would get to it and you would open up because it's important for you and the, yeah. the, the players football don't lie if you don't want to do the work the same way you spoke about the physical work you don't want to do you don't want to rest you don't want to Take care of your body. You're going to pick up injuries sooner than later. And the best example that you know is Eden Nazar. Eden Nazar is at Madrid. But In what way is he the best example? He's never been. He always relied on his talent. Always. He's mm -hmm. never been a hard worker. He's never, he never f liked to train. He was always trolling never put an effort in and he's been told by everywhere he went relied on his talent but he was working for a certain period of time and he was working really well because he's so talented but it was just a matter of time before before football stopped him now and because he didn't pick up the right habit in his life he was working hard he wasn't a hard worker he was he was working hard when Somebody gave him a task, get it done. But to become the best of the best, you got to have this work ethic to work hard regardless, to be a hard worker, regardless of the result. And it, because he was so, t but the talent that you have, that he has, that we all have, you haven't worked for it. It's been given to you. That's natural. The work ethic, the work ethic, whether it's physically or mentally, that's some. That's different. That's a different story. And that's something you can work on. That's something yeah. you can work, and you have if you want to stay at the top or yeah. reach the top. That's not negotiable, and he never had it. So now he's been in Madrid for years, big transfer, but he never played, and then he picked up injuries. Those injuries are the result of the lack of training, preparation, real training, preparation the journey. The process, he hasn't been in love with the process. And now, unfortunately, he paid the price. That's why it's a good example in terms of mindset. And but he was so talented. That's why I don't, I would pick a, a hard worker rather than a talented person, not even player, all day, because I know you, you, can, yeah, you can create a champion with that. Yeah. Um. One one thing because before we go to our our last category, the three random questions that I have for you, um, what is one thing? And we spoke about simplicity. We talked about reducing complexity. We talked about privately last week about re reducing the noise overall um, to to focus um, to introduce simplicity, and and how important that is. Is there one thing that you know across across clients you've worked with, across projects you've seen as a this work for for many people one way or another or is it a highly individual uh, task to introduce simplicity and it's, it's not easy to introduce simplicity it's, it's really not 
based on people's background, people's stories, because we we always use simplicity is a big word. It's a word that everybody uses. Now you got to be simple, play simple. No, you know what? Make it simple, even in your life. But I always say, how does he apply into your private life? Because people use the word, but sometimes it's so generic, and we like the word respect. No, it's not yeah. respectful. That's but it's bring it back to your life, make it personal. Not as I said, should you, it's not about what mommy or daddy or your wife or husband wants it to be. Then you're gonna realize that it might have a, di- a total different definition and meaning for you as the person that you are. So the simplicity, I would when I introduce and I speak about it, I said, okay, what is it for you? And once you're really sure about how he does express for you, that that's all I need because then it becomes very authentic. Simplicity goes with authenticity for me. Yeah. And, and that's is, what people like. This is something when, when I reflect on our conversation last week, is something that I, I realized. When you're in your in your natural, you know, your sort of happy path, um, your authentic self, this is when things start feeling simpler, right? This is Everything. when you know it, it just falls into place. And every time you need to you mentioned you need to adapt. You need to you can do that for, for some time, but every time you need to adapt, things feel more tedious, more process heavy, more uh, harder to work on, ultimately. Not as not as simple. Um, I think there's a there's another um, uh, another way to describe it. I think in the creative space where we talk uh, about often about the, the flow the flow state uh, that you that you did. And when things just it feels light, you move fast. And I have a feeling this happens more often than not. Um, and especially after talking to you last week, it happens more often than not when, when you're in your natural, when you are at in a state where you feel comfortable. When you're in, and that's the simplicity that we talk about, the flow, for me, uh, attach it to your gift. Is yeah. Ask yourself, what comes easy for you that is hard for others? And, what, and yeah. what's come easy for you is hard for others. It's going to be simple. And that's, for me, the indicator for anybody, whatever you're trying to reach, that, that's, the, that's the direction that's the that direction. you're going to go to. Then Brilliant. You see the, you see the result. I, I love that. So last section, I, I announced it previously. Um, I, I know you're a bit scared about it, but don't worry about it so much. <laughs> bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. <laughs> so we have we have three uh, quick random uh, questions for Seth Poisson. First one, what was one thing that you brought to all matches outside the obvious things, outside your shoes, your your, your tapes, your your things? What was one thing that you, you always brought with you, home game, away game, World Cup game, Premier League? It's like <gasps> this was always with you. Wow. One thing that I always brought outside of the, okay. Uh, oh, it's a good question. Sweets. Sweet. <laughs> I think it's going to be sweets. Special type of sweets or? Not special. I'm, I'm, I got a sweet tooth, which is a problem. Which is a problem. I'm telling you. And in Qatar, it was amazing for that. Uh, but... I think now, in a serious note, something that I've always, always, yeah, uh, my Bible. Always. Your Bible and sweets? Yeah, always, everywhere. Very good. Second question. What was your last mistake in purchase that you really regret? (laughs) 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 Okay, my last purchase that really regret. I bought, um, it was a year and some, a year and a half, I think pre-COVID, let's say two years ago, I went for shopping because I was, uh, I went for shopping. I don't shop a lot. And I bought uh, some sort of a long jacket, D-squared, for a certain price. 
which I never ever worn. I I mean never ever. It's still there. My wife is trying to sell it, <laughs> but I, when I bought it, it's because you know what? I'll be honest. My therapist, because I I, I follow a therapy. Yeah. She was telling me that I never do anything for myself. So, uh -huh. Mr. Basson, go for shopping and don't think about it. Just feel free shopping. Feel free. I, it was difficult for me, but I did buy a few things. And I went to that shop. I saw that jacket, which wasn't my style at all. And I bought that jacket, a long one, mixed denim, mixed leather. I don't even know. <laughs> That was a massive mistake. Find a therapist. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. She's the best. But <laughs> I understood the point. <laughs> but that was a massive mistake. And I can't even sell it. Nobody wants it. <laughs> so that was a mistake. <laughs> wow. This, this sounds like something we were looking for here. That seems like a, <laughs> yeah. a really poor, poor purchase. Yeah, poor purchase. Okay. Th the third and last one. Uh, what have been, would have been your dream job if, uh, if the football career would have not picked up? What's, what's your, your dream job? My, nurse. my dream job? Yeah. Being the best dad. It's your dream job? Oh, that's, that's, that's doable at, at any given career, right? Yeah. So that's... Uh, let me explain. When we ask people, for example, the youngster, the young, what do you want to do when you... What, how, who do you want to be when you grow up? Everybody attach that answer to a title or a job. A title of a job. And I, and I wonder, and I kind of trick them. I said, all right. So why, why does it have to be attached to a job? Yeah. A title that's going to represent who you are. Me being the, my best job since I, I'm, a, I'm a dad, I'm not the best because nobody's going to be perfect. But my dream job, and I love the word dreaming because dreaming is free. You can dream as big as as you want. Would be to be the best superhero dad. At least that would be my. That's that's that a dream, dream job. job. Yeah, that that's a job. And being a dad is a job. Don't worry, you're gonna find out soon. It's a job. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna find out eventually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a real job. That's amazing. Um, Seb, thank you so much for, for joining. Um, Thanks for having was, me. This was good fun. Thank you for the insights for um, about Tata. Thank you for the insights about what we do these days on, on the mindset, on the coaching, on, on everything. And for jumping in, I know you have a busy Saturday um, in front of you. So uh, wishing you, you good luck for that. Um, as always, you have the, the last words. Um, one one message that you, that you want to leave us with. One message is... You only have one life. We only have one life. I don't want you, I don't want us to wake up at uh, 70, 80 and say, oh, if only I would have. Take action. I mean, life is short. We got to take action. So it's your life. Even with your kids or your husband and your wife, you're never going to go on the other side with them. So you got to take action about your life. And on the other side of difficulty, the reward is sweet, so it's worth it. So take action, mm -hmm. take 